Alright guys, having to record this because the video was not working. This is a, a video covering mitosis, um, a, a two-part video. Um, we're going to focus on mitosis this video, meiosis the next video. In this video we're going to talk about the different forms that DNA can exist in. Chromosomes, chromatins, sister chromatids, and I didn't write this, but homologous chromosomes. We're also going to be talking about the various steps of the cell cycle, and I'll also have um, words describing what happens during each part, and also pictures. All right, so why do mitosis? Because uh, for us humans, it's to grow and repair, growing from uh, the single cell that we started out as to an adult um, requires a lot of mitotic cell division. I'm also repairing damaged cells in my body, even though I'm an adult who's not growing anymore. For any kind of organism that reproduces asexually, like plants or say amoeba, um, they would reproduce asexually with mitosis. All right, so how does the uh, process work? It's actually shown here as a circle because mitosis, unlike meiosis, is cyclical potentially. Um, in other words, it can um, uh, the cells that are produced at the end can go right back into the initial step and repeat it. Um, so what are the basic steps? Um, there are three basic steps to this overall cell cycle. There is interphase at the bottom. There we go. So there's interphase, um, the I. Um, I'm not going to talk much about G1, S, and G2 here. Um, there is mitosis, um, a very short part. We're going to talk a lot about the steps of mitosis, but the overall duration of mitosis is very short. So there's mitosis. And then they're not showing it here, but cytokinesis is a third step. Um, some people consider cytokinesis a part of mitosis, but I do not. So three steps. Um, what are we doing in interphase? We're preparing for the rest of the cell cycle by making all the proteins that are needed. Remember that you cannot make um, uh, proteins in any part of mitosis or cytokinesis when the DNA is packed up. Um, this is also where the DNA gets copied because you also cannot copy the DNA at any other point. It has to be copied when it's unpacked. Then in mitosis, we're going to pack up the DNA, line it up, and split it up. And then in cytokinesis, we're going to split up the cells. So back to this, I just had something I wanted to say briefly about this G0 idea. Cells are not always dividing in um, our bodies. In fact, most of the cells in our body currently are probably in G0. Cells can be signaled to stay here and not go through the S phase, say, of interphase, where the copying actually occurs. Um, S stands for DNA synthesis, or we're going to call it replication also later. So if you don't want to spend all the resources needed to copy the DNA, you might just want to stay in G0 as a cell. The DNA is still unpacked, so you can make proteins as normal. You're just not spending all the resources to produce another cell. So G0 is a very important part of regulating cell activity. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about how DNA might exist in, in different parts of the cell cycle. Um, over here on the left, it's very unpacked, as it is an interphase. We're going to call that chromatin form in just a minute. Um, but there's the DNA double helix, and that double helix is actually wrapped around little proteins in purple here called histones. So histones are what can wind the DNA up and unwind it on command. And during a cell division early in mitosis, they're going to all be told to really pack up the DNA, and then it folds and folds and folds and folds, ultimately making this uh, very packed up structure um, that I'm now highlighting in the center here. So on the left, chromatin, very unpacked interphase. In the middle, one chromosome, and we can consider that also sister chromatids. Um, we call it sister chromatids because there is uh, one copy on one side that I'm going to highlight here in red. And then its exact copy is tied together with it in the middle, temporarily making an X. And then when we split up those chromosomes in later mitosis, we consider them to be separate chromosomes from each other. One chromosome is going to go to one side, the other to the other side, and then we'll split them up into separate cells. Okay, also a concept important is that in our body cells, in our somatic cells, our chromosomes come in pairs. 
we have pieces of DNA that are pairs of each other and we call that diploid if that works that way because you have two of every chromosome. An abbreviation you'll see for diploid is 2N. So you have two of each type of chromosome. This is a human um, depiction here. So let's just highlight one chromosome pair and let's talk about what um, uh, homologous pairs then really are. These are homologous to each other because they carry the same genes. For example, here I highlighted the gene of seed color, say in a pea plant chromosome pair. And they're homologous because they both contain the genes for seed color, but they just might carry different versions of the gene. One chromosome has the dominant yellow seed version, and one uh, chromosome has the green seed recessive allele. So they carry the same genes, but they might carry different versions of the gene. Homologous pairs don't have to carry different versions of a gene, though. So I highlighted a second gene on here um, that shows that they um, have the seed-shaped gene as well, but they just carry the same allele. And then I highlighted a third gene here just to show that the dominant alleles aren't always together on the same chromosome. Um, you get your chromosome pairs because you get one from mom and one from dad, and just whatever genes they happen to pass on to you. Um, then when you have offspring, you're going to pass on one of your pairs to them as well. Okay, but if we're talking about cell division, let's talk about how they're copied. Um, here they're shown being copied and packed up into that sister chromatids form. And what I'm highlighting right here, those are sister chromatids to each other because they're exactly the same. These are also sister chromatids to each other because they're exact copies as well. But these are homologous to each other. Again, homologous pairs never tied together in an X and they might not be exact copies. All right, so how does uh, mitosis work, the overall steps of the cell cycle? Um, we're going to start with an initial diploid cell where the diploid number is eight total or four pairs. You see that there are four homologous pairs here. Notice that they're not anywhere near each other in a, in a real cell. Um, in interphase, our first step would be to copy everything. I can't show you chromatin form very well here, so pretend that they're still not packed up in chromatin form. We're going to copy them as it shows here. Okay. Um, and then in early mitosis, we would actually see the copies in sister chromatid form once the DNA packs up. So then we're ready to organize everything. We're going to line them up into one line of sister chromatids here at, in mitosis. Um, in any cell division, you want to divide your DNA up equally. So how do you do that here in mitosis? Um, you can split them up right down the middle. You're going to split up the sister chromatids effectively. So um, in mitosis, the motor proteins actually walk the, the pieces apart. So here are the sister chromatids being separated, and then we're simply ready for cytokinesis, the final step, where the cell actually splits up, and you have two separate cells. So that's what I'm showing here. Notice that those two cells are identical to the original cell that I showed you, four pairs or eight total in each of those cells. And that's the goal of mitosis. If we line up the sister chromatids and split them up, then we get two cells identical to the original cell that we start with. Um, they'll be identical unless there's a mutation. Okay, so hopefully in this video we've just kind of covered the basics of um, interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis, and the different forms of DNA.